All right, folks. Um, hopefully people can hear me out there. Uh, welcome to Bringing the Science Home, a cyber symposium for Earth surface scientists. We are super psyched to hang out with you guys for the next couple of days. Um, and uh, oh, there's a whole bunch of people. We should, I guess I should light into the room. Um, we're super excited to share with you some uh, pits of critical zone science over the next couple of days. So what we're going to do is talk about what the critical zone is and some topics within critical zone science that might be of interest to all of you. And we're hoping that what we're doing will be accessible to those in the field. So um, the people that are brand new to critical zone science will get a taste of some of the things that um, that people are working on. So as by way of introduction, um, my name is Kamini Singha. Um, I'm a professor of hydrogeology at the Colorado School of Mines, um, which is in Golden, Colorado, which is in the traditional territories of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute nations. Um, I work on geophysics and how it applies to hydrogeology. And um, I also have a great group of co-hosts, which I'm happy to introduce. So my co-hosts are Pam Sullivan at uh, Oregon State University, Nicole Gasparini at Tulane, Lee Lee at Penn State University and Nikki West at Central Michigan. And you will see all of them um, over the next couple of days as we pop in and out and try to run this thing. And our hope is that this will be a super fun experience for everyone. I'm sure everyone has been on like so much Zoom lately, but um, the idea is we have, we have music happening today. We have people talking about their struggle to find their path. Um, we've got people that are gonna talk about how we as scientists use our brains. And interspersed with all that, we will have a lot of critical zone science. So um, let me go through a couple logistical things with you all before we get started. Um, so these meetings are being recorded. And so if you need to pop in or out, the schedule is set up so that you can leave or come at any time. And um, they will be posted on YouTube at a later time, at least most of the sessions, the ones that don't involve people sort of talking about their feelings. If, if you're in small groups talking, we're not going to record that, obviously. Um, but for most of the, um, the sessions that are more lecture-like, those will be recorded and put on YouTube. Um, so feel free to come and go as you see fit over the next couple of days. If you are interested, um, this meeting is also being closed captioned, so you can turn that on. Um, that can be really helpful for um, not only people with learning disabilities, but for people that have um, jargon issues, right? We're going to be trying to minimize that today, but if there are weird words that you haven't seen before, hopefully um, that will help with that as well. Um, so uh, the other thing is the chat is currently set up so that you can chat with the hosts at any time. Um, we will open the chat up for participation within um, groups for a few different um, uh, panels that we're running. Um, but for right now, if you have questions at any time, please use the chat function. It will come to the hosts and we will use that to address your questions and comments. Um, we will start um, our first lecture and you can put a chat in at any time and we will address it as soon as possible. We will ask the speaker at the end of their, their talk about um, your questions, but if you have anything that you need from us in the intervening time, um, feel free to chat with us at any time. There also should be a raise hand function, so if you need uh, to get our attention for some reason, please feel free to use that as well. Um, Let's see, what else do I need to tell you about? Oh, we have a hashtag, which is super exciting. So um, we have this join CZ Science. So if you are um, on social media and want to use that, feel free to use it to tie us back to this meeting and that way we can all find each other. And that will be on a bunch of slides. Um, all right, I think that is a total of the logistical stuff that I need to tell you. So let's get this party started. Um, at least hypothetically. Oh, there we go. All right, so um, a couple things about our goals for this cyber symposium. So our goals are to introduce concepts in critical zone science. So we want to bring in new people because this is a really complicated field and we need new smart people coming in all the time with different uh, backgrounds and different skill sets to help answer some of these questions. Um, we want to build a community. Originally, this was supposed to be an in-person meeting, right? So that makes it a little easier to build community than it does in cyberspace. But we're going to do our very best um, to engage you all and put you in some small groups to meet other people um, as you are interested during these next couple of days um, so that you can meet some new people. Um, and the idea is to uh, bring in new early career folks, new undergrads, new grad students, um, postdocs, et cetera, into the field. And we'd like you to connect. We hope at the end of these couple of days that you've met a couple people, even if it's just virtually, um, that, that you now know that you didn't know before. So that is part of our goal as well, um, because we think that part of what makes the critical zone so interesting is just how complicated some of the problems are. And the more people we have that know each other and the more new people that continue to come in the field, the more we grow and the more interesting questions we can answer. Um, and the other thing we hope to get, although it might be hard to do this in two days in a webinar, is to inspire the next generation of inclusive leadership. 
And um, this image here on the right-hand side is the sort of six signature traits of an inclusive leader. And we hope to inspire these in our future leaders within the critical zone. And so we'll talk a bit more about some of these ideas as we move forward. Um, so because this is a, um, a seminar meant for people that maybe have never even heard of the critical zone, let's start at the very beginning together. Right? And so the idea of critical zone science is to study that little skin of the earth from atmosphere to groundwater, right? It's that, that integrated earth science, environmental science over that little skin. And there's many disciplines that would feed in, sort of traditional disciplines that would feed into what we call critical zone science. So ecology, hydrology, biogeochemistry, geology, atmospheric science, social science, um, all of these things interact and, um, and make up what is critical zone science and feedback at different scales, both in space and time. And so because of the complexity of, of systems that we're thinking about, we need sort of diverse thoughts and skills in order to move forward with those problems. Ooh, I have so many things happening on my screen right now. All right, so um, what we want from you is to, to be part of this, this community, to feel like you're part of this community, and we need that so that we can help develop and promote approaches so that we can um, quantify processes that we're interested in and look at the interactions between chemical, physical, biological processes so that we can examine how the critical zone is changing from our impacts on this planet so we can think about what's important at what scale. And so um, we want to bring in as many people as we can to help answer those sorts of questions. So um, the one thing we do, obviously, this has been a tough time just to be a, a human, I think, um, these last few months for so many reasons, um, is that we do need to navigate the fact that there are just unjust realities, too. Um, we know that hate crimes have increased in the US for the third year in a row, at least of the last FBI data that's been published um, in 2018. You can go to their website. Um, of those hate crimes, about 60% were targeted based on race, 19% um, by, by gender identity, 18% uh, from sexual uh, orientation bias, and 2% each for people um, with gender identity and, and disability bias. So I guess a question for all of us is what can we do? What is our role in creating positive change? I think the thing to think about is that we all have some sort of privilege, um, whether it's just that we're educated in the United States. Um, and so what is our role in terms of, of that? And so what we hope to promote over the next couple of days is this idea that inclusive leadership as we were talking about, or some really fundamental skills as humans, right? Our own self-awareness, our social awareness of others, um, self-management, our relationship skills, meeting new people, all of these things help us build communities such that to use the words of Dina Simmons, who wrote a really great paper this last year, we can foster courageous conversations across difference so that we can confront injustice, hate, and inequity. So we hope that you will be part of that over the next um, couple of days. So um, we're going to do a little thing. Let's say hi. Let's do the best job we can. So uh, you, this is the interactive part of this morning's warm up. So you can either grab your phone. If you have one, you can scan the QR code. Or if you have a browser open, you can open another browser window. And I will ask you to go to pollev.com backslash Singer, which is my first initial and last name. And uh, we're going to give you a minute all to log on and then I'm going to learn a little bit about who's out there today. So that should be fun. There's 85 people on right now. That's awesome. All right, hopefully folks are able to log on. See some nodding heads, we're gonna go with it. All right, so here's the first question. Oops. So who's out there right now? Totally awesome. So we have a lot of graduate students right now. That's great. Some early career faculty members, some undergrads. I'm super excited to see that too. All right, sweet. All right, it's nice to know who's out there. So welcome. Let's see if I can flip my slide again. Next question, where are you right now? Oh, sweet. 
Welcome to all of our European colleagues. I know it's, it's midday, late day for you. Oh, China, amazing. This is so great. Oh, that's awesome. I'm super excited to see where everyone's from. What great news. All right, so because I think pretty much everyone is at home right now, I'm gonna ask uh, another question, which is, I now know where you're from, but where do you actually wish you could be right now? <laughs> Whoever uh, you know, called in from Hawaii, you've suddenly got a lot of friends. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so about you, if you could give us a couple of words that describe your area of scientific interest, what is what what are you interested in most? I got a lot of hydros. Oh my gosh, this is such a great group of people. Look at this, this is amazing. So many things. We got a lot of hydros. Yeah, hydros in the house, this is awesome. Cool, all right. So background on critical zone science. So for those of you that are coming in with no experience, that's awesome. For those of you that know all the things, that's great. We're gonna call on you during this, this meeting. Where are you in terms of your space? Oh, so we got a lot of people that actually know what's going on, that's great. But I'm very excited about the people that marked one and two. So welcome. Um, we're super excited to have you here. All right, a couple more things. What are things that when someone says critical zone science to you, not necessarily your field, but what do you think of first when someone else talks about critical zone science? <laughs> There's a lot of soil. <laughs> Ooh, where rocks meet life. I love it. This is so interesting. I feel like soil is totally like winning in this, uh, in the battle of the critical zone here. Cool. Pollution, interesting. Tipping points. Shout out to biogeochemistry, awesome. Cool. All right, in the interest of time, I'm gonna keep moving us, but I'm super psyched to see soil again. Okay, no, just kidding. Um, all right. All right, and then, um, in terms of your connection to the community right now, so you might be familiar with critical zone science, but in terms of people, like how do you feel about this community? That's awesome. Oh, awesome. This is what I'm super psyched to see. So great. I'm super glad that people are, um, there's a few of you out there that feel like this, you're my people. Some of these might be the people that are organizing this thing too, so that's great. Um, but I'm super excited about the people that I'm not connected about or you're interested in expanding your networks. That's awesome. So um, hopefully we can do that over the next couple of days. Um, the last question that I'm gonna ask you guys is just about if there's anything that you felt has kept you from getting involved in critical zone science in the past. And you can actually upvote other people's questions so if you, or comments. So if you see something else that resonates with you, um, that's fine. Two. Um, I love that I've been very lucky to stumble into the CZ as getting lots of upvotes. That's very, that's great. Funding, totally an issue. Networking, awesome. We can do what we can do with that today. Um, yeah, disciplinary skills, trying to figure out how you fit in depending on where you're from. Limited location of the CZOs is a great comment. And we should come back to that because I don't think CZ science has to happen at CZ observatories, right? And so we can talk about some of that too. And Holly Barnard, who's our first speaker, can probably uh, talk about that a bit as someone who's worked in a lot of systems that are not just traditional critical zone observatories. Awesome. 
All right, so with that in mind, let me give you the, the lay of the land. Um, so today we are just about to transition over to Holly Barnard um, and I'll introduce her in just a minute. And then what we're gonna have is a, a networking event. It'll be a chance where we're gonna put you in small groups. Uh, you're welcome to log off if it like makes you nervous in any way and come back on, but we hope you stay. It'll give you a chance to like meet a few new people. Um, and then we'll have a great talk from Jordan Hayes. Rule Schneider is a super interesting person who's gonna talk about um, our brains and how scientists and engineers use one part of our brains in a in sort of a buried way. We'll take a break. Um, Jenny Druhan, who's an amazing geochemist, will then talk. We'll have one more opportunity to meet as a group. Um, Joe Kasprizek's gonna do some music for you, specifically tied to themes in hydrology, which I'm super excited about. He played multiple instruments and like videotaped this whole thing, so I'm super interested to see it. Um, e. Pinkley will talk after that about um, critical zone science from forests to croplands. Leho Flores actually recorded a presentation, which we will play for you. And then we'll close out the day with a conversation for graduate students. But please, uh, undergrads, if you would be interested in attending, I'm sure that that would be a great place also to sort of see that graduate student experience if you would like to join. Um, and that's kind of set up for the day. We'll go through sort of step by step. Um, and then we'll obviously have a whole uh, day's worth of stuff tomorrow that I will introduce tomorrow um, that hopefully will be similarly exciting. So with that in mind, let me stop my share and